Oh, we got a few more people in. Okay, let me just get the live Facebook going. Oh, I thought I was gonna, sorry guys. Welcome um, everybody. We're gonna start in just one minute. <laughs> yeah, I just have to go um, on the group. Okay. Subject does not have permission to create a live video on this group. What? <laughs> it's your group. It's my group. <laughs> Maybe because, hold on one second, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, I have to change myself to me and not my business. Okay, let's try this again. We're also um, going live with us on Facebook. So we just want to make sure that everybody's yeah, up and ready before we get started. Um, on my group traveling. Now let's see if that works. Oh my goodness, we can't get it to go live. Can any can any one of you do that? I don't know what's going on here. Give me. I actually don't know how to do it, but I will try. All right. Well, let me try it one more time. Hold on. If it doesn't um, work. I'm happy to do it again another day just for Facebook. So no, we've got a bunch of people here. We can still talk and record it. We're recording right now. Um, maybe I have to start on my group. Technology. Yeah. While we're waiting, if, if everyone wants to, if you could write in the chat box where you're calling in from and maybe also something that brought you to this workshop, what you're hoping to get out of it. Can't do it. Subject does not have permission. Um, Jason, do you wanna try? I'm gonna try. Do you know how to do it? Yep. Okay. So you know to put it in traveling in a new vegan world group. Mm -hmm. Always something. Oh, Jan, where are you? And Margarita's here. Oh, we have a new vegan travel agent. Oh, that's great. That's not letting me, Donna. We're going to probably have to uh, do the Facebook Live at another time or record this and share that on Facebook. And then I don't understand this, back. why this isn't uh, working. Let me try one other place. Let me try one other place here. Um, I don't, how do I do it? I can try. Well, if it's not letting Jason. I don't know. I know it's not letting. It's weird. Can we share it to the event? Um, it's, we always do this. We've never had a problem. No, we've never had a problem. It's always a first for everything. And it's funny, Donna's internet was out earlier today, so we were already right. <laughs> right. I'm gonna give one more shot at this, guys. Thank you for uh, being so patient. Um, we'll get started in just a moment. I just, I, I'm trying to use the business one to see what would happen. And you know, it's good we have people joining as we're doing this, so maybe it was good that we um, are have a little bit of a delay. It's giving people some chances to get in. Um, try it one more time and see if I can do it somewhere else. I know I can do it live on YouTube, but I don't have anybody on YouTube, um, connected share. I mean, I can share it on my timeline and then share it later. Um, can you share it on your timeline and then share that post into the group? You know, I can put it on my green earth travel. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. So it is on my green earth travel. 
And then what I can do is while we're talking, well, if you just give me a moment, it's, I don't know why it's giving it to my green earth travel, but it is. Um, and I'm going to share it right now to um, share to a group. Um, I knew I could figure this out, right? Um, you know, it's funny. I don't even have the three dots on the bottom where you would, looks like is where you would share. Okay. I hope it works. All right. So, uh, if you just want to check and make sure that it's working, Jennifer, um, and I'm going to start the, well, we are recording right now. We're recording. We're going to have to, we're going to clip this video later, but that's okay. I'm going to take a peek at green earth travel. Okay, we're live there. Technology stinks. <laughs> I can check too, actually. I'll check right now. I can see it. I see two people viewing it, but that might be us. Um, I'm not viewing it, so somebody else is. Okay, good. I'm going to share it to the group too, and we'll just do our best. And I will monitor the chat. Great. Okay, yes, it is up. It is up. We're there. We're there. Awesome. Woo! <laughs> it's live on Green Earth Travel. So thank you everyone for waiting. That was uh, <laughs> a little hairy there. My name is Donna. I'm the owner of Green Earth Travel. Uh, we've, um, Green Earth Travel has been in the travel industry for since 1985, but it's been Green Earth Travel since 1997. And then we, I just want to introduce my two other co-hosts here. Jennifer Kern Kaminsky, she is of Magical, she's the owner of Magical Moments Vacations and she specializes in vegan Disney and uh, family travel. And we have Jason McGregor of Vegan Vacations who is in Canada and he is the owner and curator of Vegan Vacations. Thanks, Donna. So a little housekeeping first and I think everyone's pretty good with this. Um, everyone, please mute yourself. You, if you have a question, you can put it in the chat below, or you can, I believe you can raise your hand, um, and then we'll answer any questions that you might have. Um, please feel free to, this is recorded, so feel free to share it out to anybody. Um, and I think that's about it. I'm going to now introduce you to Meredith. I love those. I love that photo of you and the two dishes. I, I'm going to have to Thank ask you, you what it is. So um, Meredith is a, I've known Meredith for a few years now. I, you know, when I have clients uh, who want to go to Aruba, she was the go-to woman for me. So um, Meredith Marin is a vegan entrepreneur with a, back work, a background in social work and community organizing. She is the founder and CEO of Vegan Hospitality, the world's largest professional vegan consultant network, and the only company offering vegan hospitality consultant certification. Uh, and do you wanna explain the rest here so, so you can introduce yourself? I'm really excited sure. about this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, my whole presentation is about me and everything I've done, and I'll, all of you can do that work. So there's going to be a lot of introductions. Okay. Uh, whenever you're ready, I can share my screen. Well, I, I'll just let you know, vegan hospitality consultants help restaurants, resorts, and hospitality groups uh, streamline food service and customer service for their vegan guests with the mission to usher the hospitality industry into the new era of plant-based hospitality. Meredith is known in the vegan community for her work to transform uh, Aruba, as I mentioned, into the most vegan friendly island in the Caribbean. Through her vegan hospitality network her mind and her mindfulness coaching practices, Meredith's mission is to bring entrepreneurship opportunities, community organizing strategies, and mindfulness tools to the vegan community to help vegans become more effective activists and entrepreneurs. She's currently living in South Florida with her small vegan family and virtually coaches and teaches vegans all over the world to make an impact. And take it away, Meredith. Thank you so much. So I see many of you here. Some have your videos turned on, some don't. 
If you haven't already, I would love to just see you in the chat box writing where you're from. It's exciting for me to know where in the world you're located. I work with people all over the globe and, um, and I love to see it. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna share my screen now. So we've got people in Mississippi, we've got people in Toronto, all over the world here. Fantastic. All right, and I'm going to also just pull up the chat box. So you're welcome to continue to write in the chat box. If you have any questions as we go, you are welcome to ask me questions. So you don't have to wait until the end. You can raise your hand. If, you don't, if I don't call on you because I'm not looking at you, you can just turn on your mic and ask a question. And if it's something I plan to get to later, I'll let you know. So this is our workshop. Welcome to Vegan Hospitality Consulting and Customer Self-Advocacy. We're calling this Tools to Transform the Hospitality Industry, or at the very least, just get yourself a decent vegan meal. Like Donna said, I am the founder and CEO of Vegan Hospitality, and I'm going to get into the details of what my company does, how it started, and how you can use some of the strategies that we utilize to support restaurants in your neighborhood if you decide to go that route. What we're gonna to cover today, we'll start with the case study, which is how this all started, how Aruba became the most vegan friendly Caribbean island in under two years. People always ask me, how long did it take you to make this change? And I look back and I think, two years. And they always say, what, how's that possible? So I'm gonna share that with you today. We're also covering my top three tips for vegan customers around self-advocacy and effective communication, whether you're going to a restaurant at home or whether you're going to a restaurant or a hotel abroad. And then we'll finally get into what is vegan hospitality consulting as a profession or as a side business and how you can get trained to do this work if that's something you would like to do. So how did this get started? Well, in 2016, I moved to this beautiful Caribbean island of Aruba. Have any of you ever been to Aruba or heard of Aruba? Heard of it, yes, been there. No, not yet. Okay, great. I'm looking at those of you who have your cameras turned on so I can see your heads nodding. So my husband, who's in this picture, he was born and raised on this beautiful island and I met him when I was on vacation when I was 21 years old. Now I'm 35. So it was a while ago and in 2016, we decided to move with our eight month old daughter to his hometown. And when we got there as vegans, there was not much for us to eat. Now raise your hand or write in the chat if you've ever been on a vacation where as a vegan, you could not find a place that could serve you a decent meal. Yeah, I see hands raised. Yeah, so I think most vegans have experienced this. And even if you do your research in advance, sometimes you show up and you're just not getting what you expected. And so even though we weren't tourists, we were living there, we're going out to eat a lot, especially the first couple of months when we first moved there, because of course everyone wanted to visit us in Aruba. So I had my mom coming and my dad coming and my sister coming and everyone coming. And so often we would eat out every night for a week as if we were tourists. So in the first couple of months of our moving to Aruba, I got to know restaurants very intimately. And I'm sure you can guess, I was eating grilled vegetables and pasta primavera pretty much everywhere I went. No matter what the theme of the restaurant was, all they could come up with was to serve me pasta. I was lucky if I was gonna get a tofu um, and usually it wasn't seasoned with anything. So I see some of you are nodding and you can relate to this. So on a vacation, we go through this and we feel kind of grumpy about it. And then we go to the supermarket and we make our own breakfast and we go home and maybe we write a, a bad review for some restaurants and we chalk it up to experience. But when you're living in a place where there, you're having this experience and there's nothing to eat and you can't have a decent meal when you dine out, well, you have a choice to make. Either you cook at home every meal or you do something to change it. And so I started taking action as a customer to advocate for myself. And I wanted to be able to make a difference in the beginning, just for myself and my family. So I started as a customer. I was just like you, going to supermarkets, going to restaurants, um, maybe sometimes going to hotels or hotel restaurants. And I started to ask myself, how can I make this a better experience? How can I get a decent meal without having to feel anxious all the time and disappointed all the time when I would go out to eat? So I started to learn different tricks. 
I would call the restaurants in advance. Raise your hand if you've ever called a restaurant in advance to let them know that you're coming, that you're vegan and that you're coming. Yeah. So I'm curious if anyone wants to share if you've called a restaurant in advance, how did that go for you? Who did you talk to? Were they able to serve you something, something good? Would anybody be comfortable sharing? Yeah, you can unmute yourself if you're if you're interested in sharing. Yeah, whenever I've called ahead of time, not to um, not to uh, fast food restaurants, of course, but regular restaurants. If I kind of challenge the chef to make something for me, I have always had good luck. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thanks, Margaret. Would anyone else would anyone else like to share an experience? either a similar experience or something different? I've had a similar experience where most of the times that the chef has said he's gonna make something that he usually comes out with this amazing dish, but it didn't happen just because I called. I usually had to speak to the first person who answered the phone and then they would transfer me to a manager. The manager would finally get me the chef and it was a big, long experience, but it was valuable because the end result was that I was arriving and I was able to enjoy a meal without having to, to explain myself while I'm sitting at the table with everybody. Great, great. I love that you've, some of you have had this experience. And so it was similar in my situation as well. When I called in advance, I was noticing that chefs were actually really willing to support me and wanted me to have a good meal, which this was really my first experience within the hospitality industry because I'm like Donna said, I'm a social worker. So I was coming with a social work background, um, a little bit of a public health background, and had never worked in a restaurant before. Um, oftentimes vegans go to restaurants and they have a negative experience and it feels like uh, the restaurant doesn't care about them or doesn't want to serve them well. And what it really is most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time is that the restaurant just was overwhelmed and underprepared for the client. And so when you do let them have a chance to be prepared and you call in advance, like some of you shared, you have a, a higher chance to get a good experience. And so through this, I was calling chef and in Aruba, because there was a lack of understanding and awareness around vegan ingredients, I was pretty much unofficially consulting for these chefs when I was making these phone calls. I would ask them, what, what will you serve me? Of course, they would say, sure, we'll figure something out. And I would say, I'd like to know what you're going to serve me. And they would say, well, we have lots of grilled vegetables. And I would say, okay, well, what kind of protein are you planning to pair with it? And they would say, what's that protein? Uh, and I would explain some of the options that were on the island. And then I would get into where to buy them, where to cook them, uh, how to cook them, and you know what kind of sauces they had at the restaurant and what the ingredients were. So we would really get into detail over the phone. And I would take it a step further and then have them photograph themselves and me with the dishes so I could share them. So this was my first couple of months just experiencing this industry in a new place. And um, I did a lot of other outreach strategies when I was just a customer to get the word out and start building this community around vegan food in Aruba. So I started an Instagram account called Vegan Aruba, really simple, but my goal at that point was to just share that it is possible to get vegan meals in Aruba. So whether you're a tourist or whether you're local living there, I wanted to share just what I was able to find and what I was able to create in the community. And so this was awesome because I was posting chefs with their vegan dishes on Instagram and then people were seeing, oh, that restaurant could make this. And people started calling these restaurants asking for these dishes that were not on the menu to raise the demand for vegan food. Um, as I was sharing my vision on Instagram, I was also just, I got all these other opportunities. So a yoga studio found me and said, hey, can you come do a workshop for us around vegan cooking and vegan transition, vegan lifestyle? So I ended up doing a five week workshop with the yoga studio that turned out to have some restaurant owners and chefs who just happened to be patrons of the yoga studio. Um, and then I started to get some local press. So some bloggers wrote about me and I got into some local newspapers. I was that, that woman talking about the vegan lifestyle and proving everyone wrong who thought that you couldn't be vegan in Aruba. I ended up giving some presentations at festivals and um, did some private cooking classes and vegan transition co coaching. Now, this was all as a customer. I was just a vegan person, just like anyone else, just basically taking any opportunity to educate people and support people in their vegan journeys. The turning point for me and what helped me launch my business was when I was invited to give a presentation at Aruba's Gastronomic Association, which is their national restaurant association. 
they were having a quarterly meeting and they had heard about me. I was now friendly with many chefs and they said, hey, why don't you come and just share your experience as a vegan customer? We know you've been to a lot of our restaurants and you have this whole mission to help us make vegan food. So why don't you come and share what you know? And so I did. And my presentation helped them understand the difference between vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free, because that was um, a major source of confusion for a lot of these restaurants, especially in the beginning. And to travel to places where there's still lack of awareness, you're seeing when you ask the server, is the bread vegan? They're like, oh, it's not gluten-free. Like there's interchange, those words are used interchangeably often just because of confusion and misunderstanding. So I gave this presentation and in the presentation, I showcased real photos from many of the restaurants that were in the room because I had eaten at their restaurants and I was taking pictures and documenting my experience. And so I showed them, here's the pasta primavera you served me and here's the pasta primavera you served me and here's your menu and the way it's mislabeled and here's what I cook at home and what your food could look like. So I encourage them to label their menus properly. I encourage them to to really tap into the vegan market. And I help them feel confident to know that there would be people coming to eat their food if they were just willing to put some vegan options on their menus, just to really be there as a customer and encourage them to take the leap. And this was, I think around 2017 at this point or 2016, 2017. So um, in, the, in the States, in the US, things had already started to shift and there was booming, you know, vegan options were booming and in Aruba, they were just at the brink of believing that it was possible, believing that it was a, a thing people would come and ask for. And maybe some of you are in communities like that where the hospitality industry hasn't yet recognized the demand for vegan food because people just aren't coming and asking for it. So I gave this presentation. At the end of the presentation, I had a line of restaurant owners and chefs asking me if I could help them. And they said, we need you because if you don't do it, no one else will. So I said, who, me? I'm just a social worker. How am I going to help you? I just came here to help you do your job. Uh, I just wanted you to do your job, which is to serve your guests. And there was one particular restaurant owner of a Cuban restaurant who said, look, we're going to update our menu next week, whether you help us or not. If you want to see vegan options on it, why don't you come to my restaurant in a couple of days and look at our menu and tell us what to do? So I did. I said yes. And I went and sat down with this Cuban restaurant. I looked through their menu and was able to make simple recommendations that I really believe any vegan could look at a menu and do because we're experienced eaters. And what vegans forget is that, you know, they think, oh, well, I'm not a chef, what could I do? But at your typical traditional restaurant, the amount of vegan meals that a chef has created are going to be on average way less than the amount of vegan meals that you've created as a vegan person in your own home. So if you think about you're cooking three vegan meals a day for however many years you're vegan, you're probably gonna to get to the thousands pretty quickly. For a chef to make a thousand vegan meals, they've gotta have vegan options on the menu. So most vegans are just by default more experienced in that category than the chefs are. So I was able to say, oh, it looks like, okay, you have ribs. Can we do portobello ribs? Um, you have a, a, a pork, it was ropa vieja. So I was like, let's do it with tofu. So simple things. And he said, okay, let's do it. Can you go to the supermarket, buy the ingredients, bring them back to my restaurant and teach my chefs how to cook it because they've never used tofu before. I said, oh, really? I got to do all this for you? Okay, fine. So I went to the, the supermarket, brought everything and I taught them how to cook. Um, and meanwhile, this, this wasn't even in English. Um, I was not, they didn't understand English and I didn't speak Spanish. And so that was an interesting experience in itself. But I want you to know, I tell you that because it's possible to do it. It's possible to do it anywhere. And I was able to help them create these dishes that were really delicious using mostly ingredients they already had in their restaurants, the sauces. And, you know, we veganized a couple of things that were pretty simple, um, basically like swapping out a barbecue sauce that they had for a vegan version of it. Anyway, a couple of weeks later, they launched their new menu with a whole vegan section. And it was, it was really like a separate vegan menu with a separate page. And they had a huge launch and everyone wanted to come and try this vegan food, not just vegans. After that, I started following up with the restaurants that had handed me their business cards at that meeting. And all of a sudden I had a wait list of people who want to work with me. So that's how it started. And I was, you know, I was, I was doing, it, it's hard to even describe the, the boom that happened from this because it all happened so quickly. Like I said, in under two years, I had gone from living in a place that was not vegan friendly at all to then going 
to restaurants and training chefs how to create fully vegan menus, training the service staff how to talk to vegan guests. And at this point, you can go to basically any mainstream restaurant in Aruba and people understand what veganism is. They probably have a separate vegan menu. I was also training um, at government offices and going into the central bank and you know, really anyone who would have me, I was there giving presentations. I was doing cooking workshops for hotels like the Hilton and their leadership teams. Um, I even taught at a local culinary school and did plant-based workshops for the general public. And I also partnered with the tourism agency to, have, not agency, but like the tourism authority on Aruba to plan an influencer trip. So we had vegan influencers coming in from North America to promote Aruba as a vegan friendly island, which just raised our, our searchability, our SEO for the island so that we were getting more of an influx of tourists. Who so I, this with you. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but who were the influencers? Yeah. Do you mind saying? Sure, we had, um, I, I don't know if you know, there are like Instagram YouTube and YouTubers. So we had Brian Turner, who is a, um, a vegan bodybuilder. We had, uh, Remy Park, whose her Instagram is Veggiekins. She's in New York. She's a, a foodie influencer. We had um, Marina Qtab, who is a like a sustainability eco vegan. Um, my gosh, who else did we have? Uh, Jasmine and Chris from Sweet Simple Vegan. You might okay. know them. They're in um, Washington, Oregon area. Yeah. Yeah. So most food, food kind of food bloggers. Right. And they were having experiences. So the restaurants and hotels that I had worked with already to create vegan menus. They, we, we got everything sponsored. So they were providing free meals. The hotel I had worked with was providing free rooms. The tourism board was providing the flights and was able to arrange this promotional trip that allowed for the, um, the island to, to then be seen as vegan friendly and increase tourism there around the vegan guests. So as I was doing all this, of course, I was getting a lot of um, people following me. So on my own Instagram, People started following me from all over the place. They had either visited Aruba and seen the changes from the year before they had been there and then they came back and all of a sudden things have changed or they were following one of these influencers and noticed what was going on. And I started getting messages from people all over the world saying, wow, what you did in Aruba is incredible. And can you come to my country and do this? Can you teach me how to do this? And I thought, okay, well, how's this gonna work? I'm not gonna be some traveling vegan and go to every country and veganize it. First of all, as a social worker, that didn't feel ethical to me to go into other people's cultures and try to modify the way that they're eating. Um, for me in Aruba, it kind of happened by accident. It wasn't that I had an agenda to go there and, and change things. Um, so I wasn't going to go to other places to do that work, but I thought, well, what would a social worker do? Okay, I could start a, um, a training program to train locals in their own communities to lift up their own communities and to do this work in a culturally appropriate way um, using a method as as a framework utilizing the method i used as a framework to work with the restaurants and then letting them do their own thing and start their own businesses or projects or organizations and go on their way to to veganize their communities and so that's what i did at the end of 2019 i started vegan hospitality which is a us-based business and uh, trained so far in the past, I guess it's been almost two years, it's been 55 vegans in 18 different countries and 17 US states to start their own vegan hospitality businesses and really movements, so communities they're building. And this has been mostly during a pandemic, so mostly restaurants being closed and hotels being closed during this time. However, um, I'll share with you more later about the program, but we've really had great success and that's what's kept me going to continue it. And we're going to be doing the program again, really the seventh round of this program this coming July. So each round is three months and I accept a cohort of about 10 people in each round. And that way we keep the group small and I'm able to work one-on-one -on -one with everybody in the group. So I have a question right. for you. Um, and anybody, please raise your hand or just pop in. You don't need to raise your hand. Just unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, the question I have is, um, how about airlines and cruise lines and trains? Have you thought about working with them as well? Yes. So airlines, it's interesting that you ask. I actually um, did have a, a consulting, some consulting work with the, so, so airlines work, some of them work differently than others, but right. at least the airlines that were coming through to Aruba, they were hired, um, they were hiring a, a separate catering company. So you're not actually working directly with the airline from my experience, right. you're working with a catering company that's then contracted with the 
airline, um, which is interesting because the catering company that I was supporting was also the catering company for the high schools and the catering company for the prison um, and for probably many other government offices. So it was a really large place. And they, um, to be honest, they were a bit dysfunctional with their leadership and a lot of, there was a lot of staff turn turnover when I was working with them. So I don't even really know what was accomplished, but we had started a project with the high school to get them to have a better a vegan option at their cafeteria. We even had a bunch of high school students that were invited into the catering company and had a meeting with the executive chef, which is really exciting. And um, with the airlines, they had told me that they already have a vegan option. And so they were they were able to provide vegan options for the airlines. I helped them. Have you tasted the, the vegan bread. options? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. But yeah, it was like a, a veggie burger. And they were, you know, I helped them connect them with a local bakery to make sure the bread was vegan. Um, yeah, but basically my I was trying to touch as many touch points, you know, I'm sure you can yeah. tell. Like I was trying to help anyone that was available. Um, but some some places were just more difficult to you know, to get going. And right. um, eventually, <laughs> so they, they definitely go. need help in that department, yeah. but they're, with I mean, it's getting better. Line, yeah, with yeah. cruise lines, it's interesting that you ask. Um, I did try to reach out to Royal Caribbean and I didn't hear back and it was probably just very bad timing right before the pandemic, but they had released recently, maybe it's two years ago now, um, vegan menus for all of their cruise lines. And yes. I was noticing from customers, mixed reviews, a lot of mixed reviews, but a lot of potential and I think that their rollout just wasn't, from my from my opinion, limited opinion, because I didn't, I haven't been on their cruise ship recently. But it seems like there wasn't a lot of streamlining going on, where the service staff wasn't trained. So they were each chef on each um, boat has their own opportunity to create their own menus. There was no um, standard menu, and and it makes sense to a certain extent because they're they're having they're going different into, access to different yeah, products, yeah. right? So it makes sense, but. There could have been, in my opinion, a little more streamlined and also, um, of course, a more standardized staff training because you right. know that when a chef is the only one who knows what they're serving, very complicated to communicate that to guests. So those are really excellent questions. That would, Thank that you. would be a big take. That would be a big thing for you to take on the cruise you know, lines. If you, have a, if you have a contact, I'm there. <laughs> so, well, we um, can talk later because that might happen. Yes. Awesome. Does anyone else have questions at this point or should I keep going? If you have a question, you can turn on your mic or write it in the chat box. Oh, oh Meredith. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. Yes. Was somebody talking first? No, but I, can you turn up? We can, I don't know if you're not close enough to your mic, but we can, I can hardly hear you. Maybe is, is that just me? I have a question. Can you hear me better? Yes. Okay. Um, why are we so concerned as vegans? You know, you said you didn't want to go in there and introduce something new to their culture, but these people with the barbecues and grilled whatever kind of animal, they have no trouble going in there and just slathering themselves all over all kinds of other cultures. Hmm. It's, vegans, it's, a good, it's a good point. Right. So it's a, it's a good question. I mean, everyone lives their own values. So if, I, I wouldn't say that I want to adopt the values of people I don't respect or people that I wouldn't like to you know, do what they're doing. Um, I would want to live by the values that I, that I believe. And so there's different ways to communicate our values and there's different ways to, to make change. And so I'm not saying that we, we shouldn't, I'm not saying anything that you should do. I'm saying what I did is that um, I tried to have the best intentions in mind and give them the benefit of the doubt that they actually did want to serve vegan guests and they just didn't want to, you know, they didn't know how basically. And that's, that's what I, I was well received with that strategy in most places. Um, but my comments about not wanting to travel the world and do this was really just around cultural competency, um, not necessarily related to uh, veganism, but more just related to colonization and just coming into someone else's home and making changes. Um, it, it also helps on the more micro level. Like if you are an actual customer at a restaurant, you're going to have a better chance at making a change. So if you're actually living in a place, you're also going to have a better chance at influencing that place as well. Right. They see you as more of an True. ally. Right. Yeah. Great. But again, this is my, this is my thing. So you are all welcome to have different strategies and I don't claim to be an expert. I claim to just share my experience. I really think that we all have to put our heads together and 
create lots of different strategies and partner with each other because there's, you know, if, if someone had created a way to make a vegan world, we, we might have it by now. So I think we're all strategizing and trying to figure that out together. And it's definitely my mission. And I know many of you have that mission too, but I think there's different ways to go about it and we need different strategies. So thank you for, for asking that question and for presenting another way. All right, I'm gonna keep going. And then of course, if you have questions, you can continue to ask. So the result was in uh, 2019, Aruba was named by Happy Cow, the most vegan-friendly Caribbean island with the most vegan-friendly listings per capita. So like I said, if you go travel to Aruba, people are going to greet you as a vegan with um, excitement. They see vegan guests as valuable. They understand that you did what, exactly what you're looking for. They'll bring out a vegan bread basket. You'll have a vegan dessert option at most places. And I also have a website, veganaruba.com, which lists the most up-to-date options. So it's easy for travelers to go and find the good vegan options. Of course, Happy Cow is also possible, but it's nice to have um, just a, a place where there's blogs, you know, there's, there's more information than just a review about the restaurants that you're going to. So I want to be really open about how this transformation happened so quickly from, from my understanding of what happened, because like I said, it was a pretty big whirlwind and I'm still in it. But I think that two things really made it happen and it wouldn't be honest to discount the privilege that I brought into the situation. So I want to start with that. I had the privilege of time. I had time to go to these restaurants and, and money to be able to eat at these restaurants and family to be able to dine with me. So I was having these experiences out of privilege being able to go and try all of these different uh, places. I had time because I had just had a child and I had committed to working from home for you know the foreseeable future. And so at that point I was just able, I had more, more time on my hands, which is so important if you're starting a business to have time to actually start that business. I had experience in education where it wasn't culinary or hospitality related, but some of the experience I had really, I feel helped me with the work that I did. So the social work community organizing experience, the experience I had working for a hospital in New York City. I worked for New York Presbyterian Hospital for three years in their community outreach program. And through that, we made restaurant partnerships. We made community partnerships and I also worked with schools to help transform their cafeterias. And so I had some of this experience as well as experience with mindfulness and coaching and, and relating to people. So I was able to talk to people in a way that was disarming and not you know, confronting the way that many people view vegans and they have these biases that I was going to come and attack them when really I was there to ask questions and support them. Not to say that vegans can't do that, but that sometimes there's a stigma around that or an expectation. Um, I also came in with the confidence to say yes and the confidence that I can help people, which is a privilege because I had these experiences in my life where I was able to help other people and I had built the confidence within myself to be able to, to know that I was capable of doing things I hadn't done before. Um, I also had the privilege of working with a small community to start. So Aruba itself is about 150,000 people and it, it's like a small town in that way. However, there are several million tourists that come in, in, in and out throughout the year. So I had this really interesting privilege of working with two different target markets and I was representative of the target market of tourists. Even though I wasn't a tourist, I I looked and, and sounded like a tourist. And so I had that opportunity when I went to a restaurant to have the privilege of being their target market. And so they wanted to please me because I was their target customer. Um, and of, of course, with anything that you know happens really something exciting, it was the right place at the right time. Veganism was just starting to, to really take off in the US. I mean, when I left New York City, I had moved from New York City. There were like 10 good vegan restaurants. Now, what, there's like 60 or more. Um, so in that amount of time, things were booming in the vegan hospitality field elsewhere as well. Um, the other thing I had was a strategy. So I started with a vision and I was really clear on that vision from the start. And I'm going to share that in a, a few slides. Um, I had a mission and a method. And as I was working with my first restaurant, I was already starting to create a method of how would I replicate this at another place. And that was also from my social work and research background. Um, like I shared, I had this positive approach. I was always trying to represent the vegan community in a trendy way, saying this is so fun and exciting and don't you want to do this too and you'll feel so great and really bringing in a non-shaming approach to my communication. 
Um, I also had the collaboration and involvement of a variety of stakeholders. So I was constantly thinking, who else can I bring to the table? Um, I'm not just going to work with restaurants. I'm going to talk to the government and I'm going to, you know, share um, share things with the yoga studios and go into schools. At one point, I went to schools and lectured with the students and really thinking who are all the people involved and how can they benefit from bringing veganism to this island. And there were so many people who could benefit from that. Um, and I also had a willingness to learn on the job. I wasn't afraid to fail and I wasn't afraid to do things that I didn't know how to do and learn. My first kitchen I walked into, I didn't know how to hold a chef's knife properly. And I looked at it and I was like, this is bigger than the one in my kitchen. Huh, what am I gonna do with that? I so I know how. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll send you and I have a good knife okay, training. Good. For you. I, I eventually learned how to use a knife, uh, of course, but it's, you know, it. you have to be willing to do things that you don't know how to do if you're going to do something as a pioneer and something new. So yeah, so the first chef, I, uh, one of the first chefs I worked with was, super kind and was willing to, to support me in learning how to do things like chop vegetables properly. And, you know, I went to throw out the stems of the cilantro and he said, what are you doing? That's the most flavorful part. Let's chop it up and put it in your soup. <laughs> right. So it was a, it was a collaboration from the start and I was really willing to learn and collaborate. So these are the two things that I really attribute to my success. And while I can't necessarily teach the privilege part of things. I can teach strategy, which is what my consultant training program focuses on. Um, and there are aspects of my privileged education and experience that I do integrate into my training program, which is the mindfulness tools and the self-confidence, which really played a huge role in my success. And so I incorporate mindfulness and confidence training into the strategies around the vegan hospitality training program as well. All right, um, any questions so far? Um, I don't see any, does anybody have any questions they want to ask? No, I, I just want to say, I think that's so, um, that's just so smart and so insightful that you include that mindfulness and confidence as part of your program, because I, I think if we polled a lot of people, they'd say that that holds them back. I mean, I even find myself, there's times when I'd want to approach someone and, you know, I just don't know how they're going to react. So then you, you know, you settle for your pasta primavera or whatever, when maybe you can make a real connection. So I, I, I didn't know that when I first heard about your program. And I, I just think that's really great. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I incorporated it from the start, but it's only gotten um, to be more foundational, as I've, like I've said, I'm now on the seventh of running this program, and I've seen people start their businesses, and I've seen the obstacles they encounter, and so much of it has to do with those internal resources. And so I created an additional six-week mindfulness and confidence building course, and that's now incorporated into the vegan hospitality course for everyone who's alumni or who's taking the course as new. So I'm going to share now three my three top tips as a customer. So you don't even have to go into the consulting business to benefit from these tips. Everyone can use this as a vegan customer. So this is what I believe is really helpful in trying to inspire change and also just get served a decent meal that you deserve. So you don't have to leave feeling frustrated, feeling like you spent your money on something that wasn't worth it. Um, and after I share my tips, I'm going to then talk about the training program and I'll share how you can follow up with me if it sounds like something exciting to you and you want to learn more. All right, so calling restaurants in advance. We know some of you have done this. So what, what I like to do is always ask exactly what you will be served and always ask to speak to the chef. Um, often you'll call a restaurant and you'll speak to a host and they'll tell you, sure, they can make something vegan. And if you leave it at that, you'll end up at the restaurant and just get whatever leftovers, you know, you're, you're leaving it to chance. So you really want to ask to speak to the chef. And I know that sometimes it can feel nerve wracking. Like, what am I going to say to a chef? And they can be intimidating. But I want you to remember that you have the power in the situation because you have the money and the choice to dine at their restaurant. And so they really usually do want to serve you. And if it turns out that you're in a conversation where they're really not agreeable and they really aren't excited about cooking you something creative, then you can not go there. Then you have a choice to make and at least you're empowered that you can say, I'm gonna go somewhere else. So when you speak to the chef, I would advise you to be really specific and ask questions. So ask them, what kind of seasoning will you put on the tofu? If they've said, oh sure, we have tofu. And you know, ask them, um, what kind of vegetables will you put on it? And are you aware that often the portion sizes for the vegan meals need to be a little bit larger because it's fewer calories. So we need to make sure that we can be full and just sharing 
what it's like as a vegan customer and even sharing some of the mistakes that other restaurants have made with you in the past so that the chef now has tips to satisfy you because you want the same thing. You wanna be able to leave them a five-star review and they wanna be able to get a five-star review. So you really have that in common. Um, a great I thing about- to say, I, I have uh, like, this might be silly, but uh, my boyfriend is a chef and I feel like they're just also normal people like us who are open to like having those conversations too. So sometimes you just like humanize them. Like, yeah, they're a chef, but they're also just like a person. Like they could just, they love food too. So they could also understand like that we want to have a good meal also. I love that. Thank you, Christina, for sharing that. Yeah, it's it's funny how, you know, it can be so intimidating sometimes to make those first few co phone calls. But then once you start to get to know chefs, like you said, Christina, they're just people. And of course, sometimes they can be people who are overwhelmed or very, very busy, especially calling at dinner service time. Um, so I do recommend calling in advance, meaning a day or two in advance, or even just a little bit earlier around four o'clock before you know the diners start to come in so that the chef has a moment to really speak to you. So what you can do after you actually dine at the restaurant, um, don't leave it at that. So if you wanna really make a, a longer term shift, then what you can do is if you're if you enjoyed your meal, you can ask the server, hey, could you would you mind asking the chef if they would come out of the kitchen? I'd love to just thank them for creating this custom meal for me. So it's a great opportunity to meet the chef in person. And I've noticed that the chef, if they're available, if it's not too busy, they will be happy to come out because who doesn't love a compliment? Who doesn't wanna be thanked for something that they worked hard on? And so once you compliment the chef, you can then take it a step further if you want to and ask if you could take a photo with them. Once you take a photo with them, you're then making it public that they've created a vegan meal, which is huge if you want to encourage other vegans to then go to that restaurant. So. What I like to do, especially in the beginning, before there were a lot of options, is take a photo of the meal, take a photo of myself with the chef, post it on Instagram or Facebook, and say to my following, hey, if you'd love to eat here, comment below. Uh, if this meal looks good to you, comment below. Or if you think the chef should put this dish on their permanent menu, comment below. Tag the restaurant. You know, give them free promotion. And then that's a great way to encourage the chef to put that dish on a permanent menu because you've just unofficially taken them through the process of recipe development and they don't have to think twice if they've already got the ingredients and they've already created the recipe. So if they see that there's demand for it and that people would come and eat it, then it's a no brainer for them to start offering that to other vegan guests. So that's my first tip. Um, any other questions or feedback on that first tip? No, I was gonna ask Christina, does, does your husband, is it your husband? My boyfriend, my Your boyfriend. boyfriend. Does he work at a vegan restaurant or is no, it a regular? No, he, do he doesn't. So does he enjoy, because I find that a lot of chefs, um, they actually, um, well, some of them get poo-pooed, you know, they don't want it, but some of them actually kind of enjoy it because it's something different than what they're used to making on the menu every single day. Yeah, I also just feel like, I mean, I really truly don't know, but from what I see, I feel like a lot of chefs, when they go to like, I guess culinary school they're they're trained so traditionally with like meat based meals they just are some of them are just not like knowledgeable like they just don't go through that like training I guess I mean so it's really just some of them are willing to learn but they just don't they don't have that information available to them yet. Yeah, thank you, Christina. Absolutely. So most of the chefs I've trained have only worked with vegetables as a side dish. And it's a mindset shift for them to go into, oh, wait, vegetables can be the main meal. We can make a whole plate out of vegetables. And so it's, it's really is a shift in that. And it's really just because, like you said, they're trained traditionally and culinary education hasn't caught up yet. And there are now a, a couple of vegan culinary schools, but of course it's vegan specific. So it hasn't entered the mainstream yet. So what I wanna talk about in tip number two is what to do if you get a dish and it's not good and you don't like it. So um, I don't know, raise your hand if you've had this experience where you've eaten something, wasn't very good. And then you're just like, oh, I just, I just wanna leave now. I just wanna run out. I don't wanna talk about it. It was awkward. You had to pay for it. It didn't feel great. I didn't, sorry, I didn't realize I was still. It's okay, I didn't hear anything, Grisina. Um, has anyone had that experience before where you had something that wasn't good? No, I see some people yeah, never had I, that experience. I have a question for you, which will maybe you'll be, uh, 
uh, answer this uh, with this. What happens if you get a non-vegan by accident, you know, mm -hmm. Margarita, you'll remember this, or maybe not a non-vegan dish when you had requested vegan? Yeah, well, what, what would you do in that situation? Uh, I, I mean, I don't even tell me. I, I, I Well, Margar I don't know, Margarita, you were with us in Ireland, weren't you, when that happened? You're muted. It was Northern Ireland. No, actually, I didn't go to Northern Ireland. Oh, that's right, you didn't. Uh, Catherine did, and she's on the Facebook group. We went to a restaurant where they had a vegan menu, and they ended up giving us the non-vegan after oh. waiting an hour. So oh. I'm not very nice when it comes to certain things, and that was one oh. of those certain things. Yeah, yeah. You know, yes, um, they're not very nice. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to, I'm going yeah, to talk about you have to be careful, you have to... though, because you don't want them to really, you know, you're sitting there trying to eat. And then I, I just want to know how you deal with it. Yeah, so I will talk about what to do when you have the urge to not be nice. Um, but of course, if I am served something non vegan, I will immediately send it back and ask to speak to a manager and explain the, the liability concern and the ethical concern of being served something that was not what I ordered. So um, oftentimes the, they don't really understand, like they'll, they'll be like, well, you're not allergic to it. So I have to explain the ethical reasons why some people are vegan and how, you know, I, the whole reason I didn't order vegan is not only because I don't want to put that into my body it was because I don't want to pay for that. I don't want to, um, I don't want to support that industry. And so they've unintentionally forced me to support that industry with my dollar. And that you know, I haven't even eaten it. And so that just feels bad, like morally feels bad, emotionally feels bad. And so they've left a customer feeling bad. Um, so I will explain that to a manager if that happens. I think it's important to, to be honest. And, and so with my, my second tip, being honest, um, I, I really believe you're, you're not gonna make a change if you're not honest. And so when the server comes over and says, so how was your food? And you're just like, it, it was fine, thanks, like, it's fine, thanks, and then you run away, then you're just encouraging them to keep up with that same behavior mm -hmm. of not treating vegan guests like they are equal and they deserve the same quality food. And yeah. so a nice way to say it, and this is how I recommend phrasing it, and it's what works for me and the consultants that I, I train, is to use this phrase. To be honest, I was expecting whatever. So to be honest, I was, expect, I was expecting a larger portion. To be honest, I was expecting the tofu to have more seasoning on it. To be honest, I was expecting the vegetables to be, be marinated in something, whatever, like whatever you were expecting, whatever would have been a better experience. You're giving them a suggestion without talking about the, the fact that they failed. You're talking about the potential that they have to succeed. And that really flips the conversation to make it positive. So you don't actually have to share what they did wrong but you can share what you think would make it right. And oftentimes this is an entry point to offering support. And this is where you can offer support whether as a vegan customer or as a consultant, but when they take your feedback and again, make sure you're speaking to the right person. So if you're sharing with a server and they seem to be like, okay, okay, you know, you can be like, would you mind getting the manager over? I'd love to share this feedback with the manager if they would be willing to talk to me. So you can share the feedback with the manager and then you can offer support. You can ask if they need some help. Um, if they start asking you questions, great. You can answer their questions or you can get their contact info and offer to follow up with answers to their questions. Um, you can be friendly and just chat about it. Hey, I saw this great recipe. I noticed you don't have any vegan desserts. I saw this really simple vegan Italian dessert recipe. Would you like me to send it to you? I'd be happy to do that. So this is how you support restaurants just in the beginning before you would even start a business, but just really allying with them and saying, I have potential for you that you're not tapping into and I'm happy to share that with you. So um, let's go to tip number three. And as a traveler, you probably already know the power of your review. So I'm curious that um, who's, who's left any type of review for a restaurant? Raise your hand if you've ever left a restaurant review, whether it's on TripAdvisor or Google, somewhere else. Yeah, so almost everyone has left some sort of review. And I know people are watching on Facebook and I can't see your hands, but I'm and guessing if you're in a- We can't see the hands of people that are uh, not, we can't see their faces, so. <laughs> yeah, so I'm guessing if you're on a vegan travel Facebook, you've probably noticed that you can leave reviews for restaurants when you travel. Um, do you have a question? I just wanted to say, I have a little card that's printed up that says, I ate here because you have vegan alternatives. Oh, that's oh, amazing. Oh, good one. That's so cute. You can I send love that. that. There's a, it's one of the farm sanctuaries has them and they're just little business cards and you leave them. I love that. 
that's such a great activism strategy. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, so it's it's wonderful to share. And um, I'm curious, has anyone here ever left a bad review, a negative review for a restaurant that you've eaten at? I see some head shaking. Some, okay. So in my experience, there's only one reason to leave a bad review, and that is to make sure that a restaurant does not serve any more vegan guests. So it may sound harsh, but once they start getting bad reviews from vegan guests, they will stop serving them. And vegans will stop going there because they don't feel welcome because there's no vegan option. So um, on the one hand, that's a good thing if the restaurant really isn't capable or willing to do better. So if you keep going to a place where they're giving you non-vegan stuff by accident and they're laughing it off and they're not paying attention and they're not willing to talk to you in advance, that's great. So you're gonna write a bad review and make sure that vegans are protected and don't go to that restaurant. However, on the flip side, most restaurants or at least many restaurants actually are capable of doing better and are capable and willing to serve vegan guests. So what I really recommend is to do your best to, to create an experience where you can leave a five-star review and leave it as in an encouraging way. So it doesn't have to mean that they checked off every box, but a five-star review, review can be really encouraging and you can also leave feedback um, and support them and you know have them feel excited that a vegan guest had a good experience at their restaurant so that they wanna serve more vegans. Even a four-star review is not desirable for restaurants. And I didn't know this until I started working with restaurants that they would get four-star reviews and call me, the ones I consulted for, and be like, what did we do wrong? This is horrible. We don't wanna serve vegans anymore. They're bringing down our rating because most of the really top restaurants have five-star reviews and a four-star review brings their rating down. And so what I wanna share today is that if you don't feel that the restaurant deserves a five-star review yet, then it's still helpful to give feedback either directly in person or via phone or email after your meal so you can help them improve. And you can share that with them on the phone. I would have loved to leave you a five-star review and I hope that next time I can do that. But right now I was about to leave you a four-star review and I saw that that would bring your rating down. And so I decided to call instead. Would you be open to hearing feedback? So that's the entry point for a conversation. And then you can share with them feedback about what might have help them achieve a five-star review. So that the vegans, again, our goal is to, for them to see vegans as allies, not as someone who's out to get them or not as someone who's going to um, write something negative when they're still in the process of learning how to serve vegan guests properly. Right. So I, I did have something happen years ago um, and it ended up being good, but there's a restaurant right down the street from us and they had a vegan burger. It was a black bean burger and it, I thought it was pretty good. Yes, it fell apart. They knew it fell apart, so they decided to add egg in there. So then I couldn't eat there because that was the only ve vegan option, except for they did have some hummus. So I did, this is one thing, I didn't email them. I sent them a handwritten letter because I knew that they were going to get it. Emails you can like, you know, people delete. You get a letter, you, you're going to have to read it. So they didn't respond, which was kind of annoying. However... He has now a daughter who's vegan. We know the family actually. And he now has a daughter who's vegan and he added the vegan burger back in there, which is really good actually. So there you go, you know, and he knew that every time he'd pass by me, you could see him get nervous. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's, that's very funny. So we, we're all going you know, to have different experiences as, as with these places, um, but the best you can do is just to give honest feedback in whatever way that you can. And sometimes that means contacting them on social media because they might have a person who's reading Facebook messages, but not reading emails, or they might have a person who's reading comments on their Instagram posts. And so um, in my program, I teach various strategies for outreach and for communication because there's, there's not one thing that works for every single restaurant. So I do have a couple more slides and then we can take more questions if there are any. I hope, I know we started a little late, so hopefully we can go over a little bit with the time. I wanna offer one more bonus tip as a customer. So we want to not only worry about our specific meal and worry about talking to the chef or the manager, but really use clear communication with every single staff member that you come in contact with is going to help them realize that there's a demand for vegan food. So imagine how many vegans just walk into a restaurant and say, can you make the pasta without cheese and butter? Mm -hmm. And what that does is nothing. It does not tell the restaurant that there's a vegan guest there who wants vegan food. And whether you're using the word vegan or plant-based, you can use that interchangeably, that's fine. But my point is, 
be really clear about what you're looking for if you want to show them that you matter as a customer and that they should start learning how to serve you. So an example of how to phrase this differently might be, I'd like the pasta, but could you make it vegan? And then follow up explaining what you mean. So no cheese or butter. Are there any other non-vegan ingredients in this dish that I should know about? By the way, which sauce? sauces on your menu are vegan because maybe I'd like to try one of your sauces. And so when you have that conversation with a server, chances are they may not know the answer and they're going to go back and ask the chef, hey, is this vegan? There's a vegan customer. What you've done is just signal to two people at that restaurant that there's a vegan guest who wants to be served a vegan meal. So it's, it's really a great opportunity to be able to raise the demand. And if everyone was doing this, if all the vegans were doing this and not just going in and ordering this without that and the salad without the cheese, we would start to realize that restaurants would start to realize that there's actually more vegan customers out there than they than they think. Um, and you can do this with your with the host, with the server, with the chef, um, and you can even follow up the conversation if they seem interested. You can ask, and this is one of my favorite questions to ask: Hey, am I the first person who's tried to order vegan food here, or do you get other people coming in here requesting vegan food? And then you start to hear, oh yeah, actually we've, we've been seeing that there's a rise in demand or, oh no, uh, you're the first one. There's, there's not a lot of vegan guests who come here. And then you get to follow up with, oh, why do you think that is? Right? What is it about your menu that's not attracting vegan guests? Did you know that the restaurant I went to down the street has a whole vegan menu and they're seeing 10 vegan guests a day? And so this is how you start to build that conversation, encouraging restaurants to tap into this market that they're missing out on. Um, so you can, you can just make suggestions for them and it's an opportunity to just get deeper into that conversation if, if that's something you want to do. Not everyone's as social as maybe as I am or wants to be constantly advocating when they're at restaurants, but if you're really passionate about this, these are tools that you can utilize. So let's transition a little bit from customer to consultant. So if you decide you want to start something, whether that's a movement or a business, as a consultant, the first two steps that I recommend is to number one, get clear on your vision. So what it, how do you envision your community changing? If you were to work with restaurants, if you were to, to make the changes you seek, what would it look like after you did that? What's your vision? And number two, bring others into your vision. So you're not gonna do this alone. And I didn't do it alone in Aruba. Um, I worked, like I said, with so many different stakeholders and so many people really all around the world who were seeing what I was doing and lifting me up. So we need to always remember that it's not just our vision. We have to find ways to bring others into our vision. So they buy into it and they're clear on their role that they're going to play in your vision. So my vision since the beginning of my work in Aruba was Aruba is the most vegan friendly Caribbean island. And I was saying that before it even happened. I started by saying Aruba could be the most vegan friendly island. There's so much potential here. And then it's happening. And I started turning that into, look, Aruba is becoming the most vegan friendly island. It's happening. It's happening whether you like it or not. So why don't you join us? And finally, I was able to say Aruba is the most vegan friendly Caribbean island. Look at all of these vegan options. And so you'll see if you hold that vision, how that vision can transform over time. But it is important to share that vision publicly and as loud as you can so that you can bring other people into it. So the, the vision alone isn't what made the change. Having a mission, which is the how, like if the vision is the what, the mission is the how. How do I accomplish that vision? I needed a mission in order to bring about the vision to make it happen. So my mission was, and, and still is, so to make the vegan lifestyle both accessible and accessible on Aruba and started in Aruba, but now my mission with my new company is to make the vegan lifestyle both accessible and acceptable around the world. Um, so because of that mission, it was so inclusive, I was able to bring many different stakeholders to the table because there were people who were able to work on the accessibility side, like restaurants and supermarkets, so that anyone who comes to live there or is a tourist can have, um, can have options. It's accessible to have that lifestyle. It's affordable in, in some ways and it's available. Um, and then the acceptability side was the, it's fun, it's cool, it's trendy. We're really positive, we're really happy. And you, know, you can be part of this too. So that was the vision and the mission. And if you wanted to start with this, you can simply start on social media. You don't even have to go out and talk to restaurants. You can share a vision on social media that paints a picture of your community could look like if it was vegan friendly. And this is how a lot of my consultants started during the pandemic. The people I, I trained, half of the consultants in my network during a pandemic when restaurants were closed and half of my consultants, so 50% of the consultants that completed my recent um, alumni survey 
have already been featured in the media, whether that's in local radio, newspapers, magazines, TV. Um, they are already getting things written up on them just for their vision. So some of them haven't even started consulting yet, but their vision is so powerful and compelling that the press wants to talk about it and wants to say, look at this person who has this vision for our community and look at what that person's about to do. So you can get started, anyone can get started sharing a vision. And of course, this isn't just for hospitality consulting, I think for any, any change you wanna make, um, share the vision for the positive changes that you think are going to be possible when those changes are made. All right, so I have just a couple more slides where I'm gonna share what the program looks like. And I'm just gonna give you a taste of it tonight. And if you're curious to follow up, then I'll give you an application for the program and we can have a one-to-one -one conversation about it. So the consultant training and certification is, the next round is going to be from July 18th through October 3rd. It's a 12 week program. And here are the different aspects of the program. It's all virtual and it's built around 12 live virtual training sessions. And on the next slide, I'll share with you the curriculum and what we talk about on those training sessions. You also get three private coaching sessions with me. During the coaching, we talk about your personal goal, your community, because every community is different. And we strategize around the different ways you're going to approach your community. Um, we talk about different clients you might want to work with and how to outreach to them specifically. And of course, we also go into the mindfulness work and the confidence building. You also have daily communication access via an app. Some of you might already be familiar with Slack. It's a communication messaging app where we're in touch daily throughout the 12 weeks. And so you can get any questions answered. Um, you really consider me as your personal coach for the 12 weeks of the program. And you're also in touch with the other people in your cohort, which are always people from very diverse places all around the world. Each week there are also handouts and templates. So every step of the way you're getting something to take away where you, you can go straight and do the work. You, it's actually built around this idea that you can start your business during the program and many people actually do that. At the end, when you graduate, you'll receive a master training manual, which is 45 pages of the high impact hospitality consulting method, which is what I call the method of taking a restaurant or hotel or any food service business from zero to vegan friendly. You'll also be, um, you'll have an opportunity to apply for certification from vegan hospitality. And this is only available, certification is only available to people who complete this program. Certification is an extra step that happens after you graduate. And it's really just to make sure that the people who are certified by the company are people who actually choose to start their business and do this work. Um, there's no point in certifying people that take the program and decide not to do the work. So it's really built around the idea that if you wanna be certified, you can be, and you can, you can continue to be part of the network and be featured on my website and be promoted and um, be part of the company. You get also the bonus mindfulness course. So the six week mindfulness for vegan leaders course that I've created is also accessible to everyone in this program. That's all pre-recorded content. So you take it on your own time. And then you would also be invited to join the alumni network. Like I said, it's now 55 people and growing um, for really all over the world. The only continent we're not represented on right now is Antarctica. Um, yeah. we'll, see if that, we'll see if that changes one day, but as, as of now, I'm happy with where we're at. Um, okay. so. Yeah, so this is Jason, everything. Jason put the link where to where the application is for anybody awesome. who's interested. Thank no. you so, so much for doing that. So I'm going to go um, briefly into the curriculum. And this is just an overview. I go over it in detail when I interview um, people who are really interested in the program. So the vegan hospitality framework is the first couple of weeks of the program. And it's really to get you started with entrepreneurship, so you're starting a business, and also understanding the industry you're getting into. Um, how do you identify your ideal client? How, what do you need to do to start your business? So we talk about whether you're going to register as an independent consultant. Some people want to start an LLC. Um, we get into the details so that you're actually able to get started with a business in the beginning of the program. Um, we talk about optimizing your social media for success. I do a whole Instagram training, um, mindfulness strategies specifically for entrepreneurship, and then really getting into client outreach. How do you get restaurants uh, to have a conversation with you about this Topic. And you've seen a little bit of what I share because I've shared a little bit a uh, taster today, but we get into much more detail in the program. I also do a public speaking training because like I've shared, my, my being able to speak in front of a group was really the kickstart to my business. And it's so powerful to be able to stand in front of a group of potential clients and pitch your services. 
So I talk about that. Um, we talk about contracts, invoices, basically the groundwork for understanding what you're doing. What are your services and how can you actually make this change in your community? Then the heart of the program is weeks five to 10, which is the high impact hospitality consulting method. It's everything you need to do to take a food service business from zero to vegan friendly. And that includes learning how to um, conduct a, a professional menu evaluation. So you sit with a chef, you learn how to sit with a chef and a restaurant manager and have the conversation to understand how to take their menu and make it vegan friendly or create a separate vegan menu that's going to be on theme for their restaurant. We do recipe development. Um, I teach you how to give a supermarket tour to a chef, uh, product sourcing for restaurants, chef's training. So actually, how do you get into a kitchen and train chefs, even if you've never been in a commercial kitchen before and you don't know how to use a knife, you'll learn how to use a knife in the program. Um, you'll learn menu writing and labeling from, you know, it's very detailed, like how do you name the dishes? How do you describe the dishes? Um, labeling, all really all the details. Each one of these um, trainings is a two hour training. Um, you'll have a front of house training template. So you'll learn how to train the servers and the hosts, and the managers to understand their vegan guests and what's on their menus. You'll learn about different types of menu launches and how to plan events that people will come to. So the restaurants will make back their investment in you pretty quickly. And of course, uh, following up with clients. And the last couple of weeks of the program are based around continue to increasing demand for vegan food in your community. I also do a training on working with supermarket clients. So if you wanted to help a supermarket in your neighborhood get vegan products, um, stock, stock their shelves more appropriately for the vegan customers, train their staff to understand vegan customers vegan lifestyle. And we also do um, more group Q&A and sharing. And I do a little assessment to make sure everyone's coming away with all the knowledge that they need to start their businesses. All right, any questions about the curriculum or the program? And I'm gonna put up this slide too as well because you should know the tuition costs and of course the, um, all the details around the, the timing of the program. So the tuition is 1497, that's for the three months. It includes all the things I just mentioned and I offer payment plans. So we, uh, I'm happy to work with you on whatever works for you. I really wanna make sure that it's accessible to people and Everyone tells me that the value that they get out of this program, like they would do it again in a second. So I really believe in the program and I wouldn't keep running it if I didn't believe in it and see the impact that it's making. And the calls this round are going to be on Sundays. I don't have the exact time yet. It will be decided in the next probably week or so. I have interviews scheduled with people in Japan and India and Australia. And sometimes I need to interview enough people to really figure out what the best uh, time is gonna be for the people that enroll. Um, but I know that they will be on Sundays. Unless you're in Australia, it'll be Monday morning. <laughs> All right, um, any questions about this? Sounds fabulous. Yeah. Well, you know what? Thank you, thank you. And I, yes, and Jason has put the application. So the next step, if you decide you want to apply, and I do recommend that you apply as soon as possible if you're interested, because like I said, I, I already have interviews scheduled and I do rolling admissions. So if someone's a good fit, I'll offer them a spot on the interview and then you know they can take their time to, to decide whether they want to join or not, but it is rolling. So these this program does fill up quickly. So you can fill out the application. It's seven questions. People tell me that it's really fun to fill out. They're like, I, I was just waiting for someone to ask me these questions and have this conversation with me. So it's seven questions about you and your community and you submit it straight through my website and it'll come to my email and then I will reach out to you to schedule an interview. I get back to everyone very quickly within 48 hours. So we'll schedule an interview and then we can talk about the program or detail. You'll share with me your goals. I'll make sure that what you wanna do actually fits with the things that I'm teaching. So my goal is to make sure that you can be successful with the method and that it, it fits with your community. Um, and one thing I should mention as well is I do prioritize consultants that apply from places where I don't already have a trained active consultant. And um, I also only accept people from um, like in a, out of the 10 person cohort, I don't accept people from the same cities. So I won't have two oh, people wow. from Boston, for example. Um, so it, it's really important to me to have a, a non-competitive environment. And it's been so successful already with that because of that, because of prioritizing and giving people space to start their businesses without feeling like they're competing with someone else in their city. Um, and so it is important to me uh, to lead the network and make sure that there's that friendly environment. And 
like I said, it's worked out really well. People are super supportive of each other. So if you have any questions about whether your city would be prioritized, you're welcome to, to message me, email me, and that way we can discuss that if that's something that you might be concerned about. Because like I said, I do have consultants all over the world, but you know, you'd be surprised. Like, I mean, there's so many cities in every country. So chances are you have a, you have a pretty good chance of um, being eligible to interview. This is my email address. And this is my Instagram account. So you can always reach out. Um, I will always respond to you. She's and very good at again. responding very quickly. So um, <laughs> I think that we should do a uh, trip with the group here down to Aruba. Yes. <laughs> what that. do you think, Jason I and Jennifer? I never say no to a trip. And I know. After... Margaritha's already on board. So. <laughs> And actually, I was going to ask Meredith, what is your favorite vegan spot in Aruba? Oh, gosh. I, I, you know, I can't say because I'm loyal to my clients, so I can't <laughs> choose between them. <laughs> but what you can do is go to veganaruba.com and you can see some of the places that have worked with me. You can see some of the blogs that have been written. Um, you can also go to the Instagram at veganaruba and see some pictures. And, um, and yeah, also I have a free ebook I should mention on veganariva.com. You can download my free ebook, which actually has uh, recipes. I think there's 11 recipes in there. Recipes I created for restaurants in Aruba. So you can try them at home yourself without even going there. And I, I do it all the time. There's the Caesar salad. You asked about what, what's pictured in that, in those two dishes. Um, but that's at an Italian restaurant and a Caesar salad. I make it all the time and I'm always posting about it saying, Hey, I'm making that Caesar salad, I don't even have to go to Aruba to have it. So I recommend if you wanna know more about Aruba to download that ebook and it's completely free. We did share the we did share the link in the chat for anybody who didn't see it. If you scroll up, it is there. Great, I see a question about vegan friendly hotels. Yes, so there are two vegan friendly hotels that I recommend. There's They're both um, low rise hotels. One of them is called Bukuti Terra and they are on Eagle Beach. They are also very sustainable. They've won awards for like the, the Global Green Award. They've won awards for their sustainability. And what is it the called? First uh, Bukuti, I'll write it in the chat. Bukuti Terra, okay. Bukuti and Terra Resort. And um, yeah, they've, they've won lots of sustainability awards and I created their menus. So they've, they've and, and since I've worked with them, they've even gone beyond and created new specials for vegans. Um, and another hotel I recommend would be Manchebo. I'll write that in there. They, they get amazing reviews for their vegan menu. A lot of people say that they have the best vegan menu on the island. Um, I worked with them as well. They're amazing. And um, that's where we actually had our vegan influencers retreat. We had them staying at that hotel and their, their chef cooked everything for them. So those are the two hotels I'd recommend. The high rise hotels like Marriott and Hilton and all of that, they're also somewhat vegan friendly. They just won't blow you away with their options. They're not places I've personally worked with, although I have trained, I would say almost every hospitality professional on the island. So I did um, trainings for the hotel association, which really included all the chefs, all the um, managers, all the concierges, front desks. So everyone is, even the high rise, they're all aware of vegan guests and vegan tourists and know where to direct them. It's just that I haven't necessarily made menus for everyone, um, but you'll find the, impos the I don't know, impossible and beyond and you know quinoa salads and things like that anywhere you go. Any other questions? That uh, Bukhari, Buku, how do you pronounce it? Bukhari and Tara? That looks Bukhari, fabulous. Bukhari. That place looks fabulous. They're both also really wellness oriented hotels. So they have yoga and you know wellness centers as well. Oh my, okay. Yes, question? Yeah, so does anybody have any questions at all? I have something I wanted to tell you, which really takes okay. us back in years. My aunt, who was from the Netherlands, after World War II, she went to teach in Aruba. And wow. this was in 1948. And uh, there, the teachers could not be married when they moved down there. The shell, mm -hmm. there, there was a Royal Dutch shell station and it, it was not a, a tourist place. It right. was mostly Royal Dutch shell was the big refinery there. Mm -hmm. And the workers who worked at Royal Dutch shell had to take their families with them. They couldn't be unmarried. So, and the teachers mm -hmm. couldn't be married and the teachers could not date natives, you know, in the islands. Huh. So my aunt never got married because of those ridiculous wow. regulations. That is so interesting. Isn't it? How long, how long was she there? 
He was there uh, for 25 years. Wow. Well, you have to message me her name because I'm sure I know someone who knows her. It's a very small, small place. Frances Dama. She taught in a school there. Yeah. And, you know, they, they speak uh, Papiamento. And yes. Dutch. But, you know, she never got married because of the regulations. Isn't that bizarre? Wow. That is really, I, I never heard about that. That's really interesting. How the world has changed. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I met my husband on Aruba, so yeah. crazy things happen. <laughs> Any so other when questions? Are you going back to Aruba? I'll be there in July. We would have we would have caught, um, been there sooner, but of course, pandemic. Um, we actually didn't didn't even intend to move to Florida, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> we kind of pandemic. We came here for six weeks right before in February two twenty twenty, and oh, then yeah, it was yeah. March. And, <laughs> yes, yeah, so now we live in Florida, and it's great. Um, but we're so excited to go back and see our friends and family. Of course, that's great. Thank you so much. This has been wonderful. This has been one. Yeah, this oh, has been wonderful, back. Meredith. Yeah. I really like the positivity and the way you're approaching veganism. I think is really, really important because I think a lot of people equate vegans with this negative connotation, or that we're always coming at it from telling people what to do. So. I know I started Vegan Vacation saying I wanted to amplify the vegan traveler's voice. So I feel like what you're doing, keep doing it. Yes. Everybody needs to keep positive. We're seeing more and more changes. And, uh, and let's thank you go for to this Aruba. presentation. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> thank you, Jason. Yes, you're all, please contact me if you go to Aruba. I would love to share tips. I want to stay I at that it place. Got, it got very dark here. I want to stay but, at that uh, place. I need, I need to get a good I was gonna say I need I need to have Aruba vacation background for my Zoom for next time, um, but yes, you oh you'll love you'll love it you'll love wherever you stay you're gonna have a great experience um, and even people who don't stay at uh, whatever is like the best vegan friendly hotel it's it's very small so you walk for five minutes across the street from your hotel and you're at a place with a vegan menu. And don't forget to use your travel agent whoever they are. That's right. We have a Canadian in here I think. Another Canadian besides Jason. I yes, I believe a... George is from Canada. Oh, is he? Oh, George is from Canada. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one day you're going to be able to travel very soon. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, well, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me and for welcoming me into your community. And it's so nice that we get to do this because like you said, we've been in touch for years around Aruba and travel and now we get to do this as well. Yes. Um, and I know Jason put the application for the program in the chat box and I don't know if it's also on Facebook but maybe we could get it onto yeah. the Facebook. Uh, too. Jennifer put it in there. So. Yeah, yep. everything that's been shared in Zoom, I've been sharing in, on the Facebook live event as well. So um, that's everybody's everybody's all set and I do anticipate that we're going to have a lot of views on the Facebook live in the days to come and I'm going to be um, recommending this video to a lot of people because the you know I like to think that you know we're especially the three of us who are travel agents and we are so passionate and have a mission and we really know how to advocate but I the way that you put some things tonight really like you know I know light bulbs are going off for me as well so I think that's just oh yeah so helpful so I just in case people want to share it, since our group is private, I, for whatever reason, couldn't post it in our group, but I did post it in my Green Earth Travel Facebook page. So you can share it from there to whoever you want to send it out to. And I'm probably going to put it on YouTube as well. So I just I don't have a lot of followers on YouTube. I think I have like 10 followers, so it's not a big not a big thing, but I always like to put it out there in case it needs to be shared. So we'll send out the so we'll send out the recording as well. Yeah, we'll send the recording um, to you. Um, I'll edit the first part for you, so we don't have fifteen minutes of me trying to figure out how to do this. But I want to thank you. This was great. I loved it. I hope everyone else enjoyed it, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. We'll be doing Thanks, everybody. Soon. Thanks. Bye. Thank have you. A good night. Have a great night. Thank you so much. Bye. Everybody. Bye, everyone.